Ina with Inich Chef. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I want to share with you some recipe you may familiar under the name schnitzel. But in my home country we call it bimna. And that's what I grew up. We ate with mashed potato my mom always served. And it's, it's delicious. It's light, it's easy. And in fact, it's so multi-proper. So you can use many different cuts of meat and many different kinds of meat as well. So use whatever you have in fridge and let's make this delicious and nutritious bimbelna. So for the ingredients we need, meat of course, as I mentioned, any meat you like. Here's what I found in my fridge, two pounds of cube steak. It's an already beaded meat, but we'll give a little bit more final. <laughs> it's a wild pig for We like, it's very red, deep, almost like a steak. Use beef if you like. You can even use round roast beef, round beef. Um, they are similar. Slice the thing and then beat. You can use chicken in this uh, case. You can use pork chop without bone. Really, anything you have, you can have in your fridge and you don't know what to do with it. Make schnitzel. Make it permanent. Let's do it. Some other ingredients you will need it. Eggs. We'll need a few eggs, a little bit of milk, um, salt, of course, you need to salt it nicely, uh, black pepper and freshly ground, always the best. And I, in fact, I like in this recipe um, some coarse, so I'm going to grind myself. And a little bit of paprika, which is optional, totally optional. Um, if you like, add garlic powder, by the way, um, I'll add a little bit garlic powder, I forgot, but it's not necessary, my mom never used, it's totally optional, and you need flour and breadcrumbs, but you know me, I like to use different options, different uh, healthier way to cook, and I like to use different grains in my cooking, so use breadcrumbs like panko, you'll never see in my channel, and you will never see <laughs> in the future. So I'm using um, sometimes homemade breadcrumbs, but today I'm using coarsely ground rife kernels. It is not gluten-free, but has much, much less gluten and more nutrients than some crackers. And another is a buckwheat flour. That's all. You can use regular flour, you can use um, some pounded crackers or panko, I'm not going to use, but use whatever you want and it's pretty simple recipe and let's make it. But I like just to give a little bit more. That's very thin. Before we proceed to another package of meat, I have a big family, so I always cook at least two pounds of meat. One pound of meat for me is not working. And before I do second, I want to season nicely with black pepper and salt. Two teaspoons of kelp salt, or any salt you like. This salt helps to break because it's very coarse, so it will help break pepper. So we'll need about two teaspoons of black pepper and two teaspoons of salt. All right, so now it smells so good. Good pepper, <laughs> freshly ground pepper, it's everything. No wonder why black pepper is king of all spices. It's, it is. Here we're going to season nicely. Be generous. I have to proceed another pound of meat. Big family. One pound of meat is never enough for us. <laughs> but you can divide and make as much as you want. This is very rustic, very easy, inexpensive recipe. In fact, during Soviet Union, we all ate everything inexpensive. <laughs> 
kind of like during Great Depression in America. Those type of recipes. <laughs> the thinner is better because idea for this meat to have to use inexpensive parts of animal and make it able to chew easily. So that's why beat as much as you can to make it the thinner as possible. If you're angry, this is a good exercise. And another good layer of this salt and pepper. I think one is hiking here. <laughs> yes. We found him. Alright, so all components is ready. Our protein is ready, meat ready. We have dry ingredients, uh, coarsely ground rice flour. We have buckwheat flour. My buckwheat flour is white. Sometimes it's uh, dark can be grayish, same color can be, but this one is white. And buckwheat is totally 100% gluten-free, so keeping in mind if you cook for someone who is gluten-free, this would be a great recipe and great healthy substitution. And for the wet, we need eggs with a tiny bit of milk. I like to add, my mom always did that way, but it's not necessary actually. So I would think three eggs maybe will be enough, three large eggs. We went from a wave for a few days and our chicken have been in chicken coop for those period of time. They did not see any grass. As a result, we see the chicken eggs is so pale, so pale. They have no color, <laughs> no color. I would say like eggs, almost like from Walmart. Pinch of salt just helps to break, just a pinch, a break um, egg white. And just tiny bit, maybe one or two tablespoon of milk. Now what we need one more egg, four eggs. And to this, we add one teaspoon of garlic powder. About sweet paprika, same amount, one teaspoon or so. Optional. As you guess, and my mom did not use any spices, salt and pepper, that's the only thing was available at the time. And um, I think just generally speaking, we have not been exposed to many spices in Ukraine. And I believe up till 21, by law in Ukraine, even all um, government uh, buildings like daycare, universities, I don't know, school, prisons, they didn't have any spice, they didn't use any spice. That's kind of what we have from Soviet Union <laughs> generation, that's from Soviet Union time of living, no spice, bland food. I don't know, not good. People did not get used to My mom doesn't like, even if she will cap, she will not use it. All right, ready to go. Preheat your pan, and I'm using avocado oil. Use any oil you wish that can take high smoke point, high heat, because high smoke point. Dry, wet, dry. Little bit of paprika, just half 
doing this so I'm everything I boil. And if you notice, all my cooking is um, not very precise. I cook it with my eyes and with my smell, all my sensors. Sometimes I don't even know what I end up with. Um, but <laughs> today hopefully we'll make Vivni schnitzel. This should be enough. I should crack six eggs right away. But I make this. And now I want to show how I serve to my husband. That's how he likes. It's a very delicious sauce and I think it's healthy because it's fermented cream called cream fresh and I've used so many recipes cream fresh I will link below how to make even if you are not kefir maker you you will still able to make no matter what you can you can use quick and easy method how to make cream fresh and I will link below how to do another ingredients it's a horseradish and I like this brand has only vinegar salt and nothing else about three quarter cup of cream fresh and one tablespoon horseradish little bit of salt pepper just a bit and here some lemon maybe one tablespoon or so and this is optional it's dill seed if you can find some dill seeds that would be great if not it's fine <laughs> let me taste my kids are screaming hungry, so I need to finish this video as soon as possible. <laughs> Here we go. Mm. Not bad. So good. I have to tell you, it's tender, slightly crunchy from a ripe flower, little crunch, and just easy to chew. <laughs> it's uh, tender, has a lot of flavor, and this horseradish sauce, fermented cream, it just gives this more love, I would say. Mm. You can even cut in small pieces. And have like pointy, has to be pointy, and have with this dip sauce as appetizer. Why not? Or serve with mashed potato, with pasta, with uh, anything you wish. It's a nice, easy, quick protein, and we enjoy. Bring me back my memory to my childhood. I hope I convince you to make this recipe. It's delicious, nutritious. Cook from scratch, give me like, subscribe, do not forget to share with your friends on media as well. And see you next time, bye!